thing for you. But how he spoke, at second glance, is pronouncing a curse. So I rebuke that and mash that up. And every false prophecy and everything that anybody tried to get me to say amen to or agree with, set it ablaze by fire in Jesus' name. Um, the word today was God is love. And he who does not have love does not know God. He who does not know God does not know love. And it was so beautiful. I wonder if I could come on here and do it. It's, oh, it's 12, 13. When did it become 12? 12, 13. All right. So let me just come on here really quickly. And I'm going to try to, um, oh, I'll leave it for tomorrow. Maybe I should leave it for tomorrow. Oh, maybe let me give you a little touch of it. Okay. So the, the Bible tells us that God is love. He is love, and he who does not know God does not know love and does not have love. Love, love is not a... Father, you just have your way. You're the voice, I'm the mic. In your name, Jesus Christ. So, love is not a four-letter word without meaning. It is a very deep word. It is more than a word. It's an action. It's more than an action. It's a person. It's more than a person. It's a power. It's more than a power. It's a statement. It's a settlement. Love in the very depth of essence and the, the profound meaning of it is something far beyond our intellect. People call love erotica. It's like kissing, sex, um, you know, all the perverseness. And they call that love. Some call love the, fam the family love. You know, like when you love your father, your mother, your brothers, your sisters. That kind of love. They call that love. And then we have filio, erotica, and agape. The agape love of God is unconditional. What does it mean, unconditional? I mean, you could just do anything and be loved, basically, but by God. By God. So, what does that mean? It means John 3.16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loved the world. But he tells us that the world is evil. He tells us that the world is at enemy to with him. But he loves the souls of the world. Even if they're grappled in that. He has overrided his creation. Love in the essence that it is and who he is because God is love so it's a he love is a he love is God himself it's a power it's a majest it's a majestic sovereign uh, spirit that overrides every single thing created and stands as the creator because God is love all right, love in the essence that it is and who he is, is beautiful. And it's not a beautiful way you say, oh, no, 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 we go deeper than that. Love has a particular characteristics about it that cannot be missed. And these characteristics of love that God is, it fits in perfectly with holiness. It fits in perfectly with goodness, with righteousness. It fits in perfectly with um, unbiasedness, not partiality, impartial, no impartiality. Um, it fits in 
perfectly. There is no stain on this love. Yet love made a stain. Where? On the cross. On us. The blood of Jesus. Amen? So we receive that stain. But love in its true essence it radiates so much into a soul because he love who love is which is god he is the one who empowers our spirit our spirit man our body and spirit as one is a soul people call the characteristics of people a soul i still have to see that in the Bible somewhere, but I haven't. So, love empowers the body and the soul to work together in the way that God wants it to be. Love empowers the soul or the body and the spirit to work in the will of God. Love is more than a four-letter word. It's more than a feeling. It's an action. It's the action of our creator, the uncreated creator, that's at work in the spirit man, birthing what is of him. The Bible tells us that he who does not know love does not know God, and he who does not know God does not know love. Now, the Bible tells us that the fruits of the spirit, what spirit? Couldn't be our spirit, because our spirit man is just the breath, right? It's the Holy Spirit. The fruits of the spirit of God is love. The first thing, love. Love uh, sums up all of that in one. What? Faith. Which is something that the human mind is not accustomed to. Faith calls to believing in things to manifest before they're even there. That bottle of water is right there. It's there. I see it. It's here. It's right here. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. Therefore, love is the working factor in the unseen realms to bring that thing to manifest. Love. It sums up all of it in one. All of what? Where well, we got faith. Because it empowers us with faith. We got joy. Joy. How can you be happy when cities are burning down and people are dying like flies and you don't have a meal on your table yet? How can you be happy when you're sick as a dog or your family member is sick or something? Somebody just died. How can you have that joy? Love is at work. Or when maybe you put yourself in a situation and it just, it turns out bad. And it's like, you know, it makes you sad. How can love be at work? What kind of love is this? It's a, it's a force that overrides every situation, overrides every circumstance. It is He. Love is God. God is love. One of the, the characteristics of, lo of love is joy. Joy is what God gives the overriding uh, emotion, if you will, more than emotion, joy is more than emotion. What is joy, Papa? The overriding, the overriding emotion of what 
we face in any circumstance. Like the Bible says, the peace, the peace of God will surpass every understanding. Yeah, and it will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Okay, that joy comes from who? God. God is love. Love is just a fragment. Um, joy is just a fragment of love of Him. So He that that um, that embodiment of Him that empowers our spirit with love in that fraction that is called joy, it shows us something. His presence is so sovereign that we have trust in Him and we can celebrate in that because we know who holds everything. We know who's in charge. We know that He works all things for the good of those who love here, all right, love, come on, we got more, yes, King, love, one of the other, other fractions of, or oh, other parts that he is, is gentleness, now, gentleness is so hard to come by, and not pretensive jealous gentleness like Jezebel's, we're talking Talking about deliberate gentleness in humility and meekness. We're talking about humility and meek. Let me just let me just tell Liz, Lynn that I'm busy. Just give me one second. So, so she's angry about not sending me a backpack ah, ah. I don't know okay so back to the word love one fraction of love is gentleness gentleness in the fact of humility gentleness in the fact of understanding Come, being able to be above emotion, gentleness. Gentleness is not, not easy to come by, especially in these days. And tell me, ah, the lion likes the road these days. The lamb is not so prevalent. But gentleness is one of God's beautiful attributes. It's a fraction of who he is. He is that overriding power again over self over pride, over anger, over um, being heady, or pr well, yeah, prideful, being haughty, over, um, you know, when someone is prideful, when someone is haughty and heady, they're the opposite of gentle. They're rough, they're harsh, they're, hmm, smell my nose, you know, like that, how to lift their nose in the air. That's what I meant, just smell my nose. <laughs> so, God is that beautiful fraction called gentleness. You know, the fruits of the Spirit is what we're going through, right? So that gentleness or that fraction of Him, it overrides our, our flesh and our minds to come against, to come against uh situations people to come to you know to be harsh to not esteem him to not have mercy to not love others that gentleness is a thing beautiful just graceful merciful uh, attribute of him he is that he is that power that empowers us to override self with that. So we got faith, we got gentleness. What was the other one we we used just now? 
I can't remember. Okay, so the other one that's most important is self control. He is self control. He, love, is self control. What does that mean now? Oh, love is self-control. Well, you don't just go into everything and anything. You don't just, you don't just jump in, hula, yay, live, love, and die. You don't, you don't uh, eat your belly full till you put a hole in it. You don't, you know, you don't overdo things. You have self-control. You have wisdom. You are, you are empowered to know this is what you, you need and this is not what you need. This is where you're going overboard. Love is He. God is love. Love is His, his a part of Him or a fraction of His Spirit that empowers us to say no no to the flesh, to say no to the world, to say no to certain things and all things that are not good for us, that's one thing, for things that are uh, consuming our spirit, to things that are uh, idolatry to us, love is God and God is love self control is something that is needed like, like crazy in today's world especially uh where the bible says in the last days they're going to be gluttons and greedy and this and that that's and you throw it up all in the air because even it's it's like fornicators it's like adulterous. It's like, what do you call this? I don't know. Gluttons. It's like, you know, they see, they got a man or woman and they want an excellent pass. No self control. So they go after it. Or they're married to a man or a woman and they want an ex one. So they just go after it. Not just. They have like, Two sandwiches, maybe, or a sandwich, and then you're full, but you're so greedy that you want five, six, and seven. Just saying. Or you've got one glass of milk or something, and for you to be contented with that, but no, your eyes are looking at the chocolate, the vanilla, and the strawberry, too. You want them all. Um... There, there are so many things that you could... Self-control also comes with our emotions, with anger. You know, anger, the Bible says, be angry, but don't sin. You know, sometimes when you get angry, you just ball up a fist and you want to just punch down somebody. Well, some people don't think about it. Some people do it. They kick, they beat, they fight, they cuff. They stab, they shoot, and they kill. But God is love, and love is God. So that fraction of God's spirit that is self-control empowers us to override every single thing that we need to override. Be it food, be it uh, people, be emotion, well, em emotions, be it, it, whatever it may be. God is love. And who does not know love does not know God. So that, that is one beautiful other attribute. The other attribute of God, that God is love, and it's a fraction of that, is beautiful patience now I've taught you guys many many times I've taught you guys not to ask for patience I'm begging you not to ask for patience why because patience okay <laughs> okay 
suffering produces patience. If, if you ask for patience, you're going to get what? Suffering. Because suffering produces patience. When you say, give me patience with this person, you're going to get suffering. Do not ask for patience. You know what to ask for? Ask for the character of God. Because when you ask for the character of God, guess what you're going to get? Patience produces the character of God. So what you're going to get? Patience. See how that works? So that was something deep that Abba dived into the spirit realm and he gave us. Um, don't forget that. Patience is the ability to wait. The ability to trust. Who? God. The ability to trust Him. Him and what He's doing in the time that He's doing it. Love and the fraction of love that God is is patience in our human thinking and flesh thinking we like to rush and that's why we get dabbed we don't wait like the artist and put like little beautiful touches and touches and touches and touches and touches no we like to dab the old trolley whole bucket of pee in there and just say voila yeah we got masterpiece and we're looking at a mess but when an artist paints, he puts it, you know, he'll, he or she will put a, a little stripe there and a little dot there and, you know, get another brush and do another thing and be, you know, and at the end of maybe what, maybe days, you will see what will emerge. The Bible tells us that, I hear you, King. A day is like to a thousand years, and a thousand years like to one day with the Lord. What is this telling us? His timing is not our timing. He does things in a manner that is in sync with our learning ability. People say God, you know, working with Jesus Christ is just slow. And I just want things done fast, so I'm just going to go the other way. And, and a whole bunch of nonsense, right? But the Bible tells us that he's not slow or slack. He is patient with us. What does that mean, patient? To wait on. He, he, he God, who has the biggest plan, is waiting on us. To what? To learn. Therefore, he that is patient, because love and that fraction of love is patience, waits on us to learn, to grasp things, so that when he gives us something, we really embrace it. We can really see the depth of it, the beauty of it. We'll really enjoy it, whatever it may be. Make sense? So God is love, and love is God. And one of that part of, one of that, that fraction of love is patience. Beautiful patience. All right? Um, another one, King. Okay? Love is God, and God is love. In the depth of explaining what love is, that He is, because God is love, and God is a He, love is enduring, or long-suffering. And what does that mean now? It means that it goes with patience but you 
you persevere. Yes, King. You persevere. You press on. You don't stop in the end, in the beginning or the middle or three quarters of the way. You keep on. Run the race to finish it i hear you king he says he who faints in the day of adversity his strength is small but god is the almighty father so how can a person who is in the almighty god have small strength now you gotta check yourself there because if you got small strength then it means that you ain't in Almighty God. Almighty God ain't in you because you got small strength. The Bible says, He who faints in a day of adversity, his strength is small. Long suffering in perfect demonstration is Jesus carrying the cross. It's heavy. It's rugged, he was naked, he was mocked, he was scorned, he was scourged, he was scoffed, he was crucified, but he still went on. As bad as it got, he still went on. That's why it's called suffering, long suffering. But there's a length of suffering. There's a fraction of time that God has enabled suffering to birth what? Patience. So, see how they go together? So long suffering is that length of time that God has fractioned out in our lives individually and both together that we learn about him, we grow in him, we develop his character, we are uh, and we arrive at the destination in the timing and, and the beautiful um the beautiful way that he has um, he has planned it for I don't want to hear about Daniel Satan's just working over time she's just messaging me right through well, you could hear it so <sighs> long suffering is love it's a fraction of love see all these beautiful things make love that was the word today God is love, and he who does not know love does not know God. He who does not love does not know God. So love are all, all these beautiful things, including meekness. Now, meekness. If you've got everything going for you in life, meaning you've got parents, you've got family, you've got money in the heritage, or you've got favor or popularity if you're beautiful or handsome if you're um maybe talented or yeah gifted you don't have to bother with anybody you can just be all oh it's all about you whatever 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 you can stick your finger up in the air at someone, flip the bird, and tell them away, right? Because that's what people do. They do that. And one of the fractions of love is meekness. Humility. Humbleness. And people, this is what people do. And Father showed me this even. He said, oh, and he was laughing when he said, okay. So, people think God is stupid. They think that he just does not know. But he says, you know what people do? They get rich. They get into the world. They get all that they want to get. And then they come and they pretend to be humble after. And they think that God does not see and does not hear and he was laughing when he said it because it was just it was funny to him his eyes are everywhere he's the ever-present god 
Love is humility. It's a humbleness. And we see again perfect demonstration with the Lamb. Jesus Christ, God Almighty as the Lamb. We, he is the Almighty Father of heaven and earth. He doesn't need anything. He could vanquish creation and just make a new Adam and Eve and man. He would just have a perfect... He would have a perfect... Papa, give me your character. Please. I am begging you. Please, just give me your character. Yes, Alba Jesus. Please, King, help me here. So he, she's not leaving me alone. She, okay, you see, this is some, okay, let me just cut across here to tell you what's going on. He said to me, if she was ungrateful like that, things were going to happen. Believe a prophet and you get a prophet's reward. What is the reward of a prophet? Well, let me tell you, it ain't no mansion and cars and, and on the earth. It's the spirit of the living God, the anointing coming upon you. It is what it is. People, yeah, prophecy ain't what it all makes out to be. People twist it and turn it to their own pleasure. But it is not easy. Look at me. Does this look easy? <laughs> so, okay. So love is meekness, humbleness, humility. Father is the majestic, sovereign God of planet Earth. He does not need a fiddle. He does not need a twig to a king. He is the king of kings. He can vanquish creation and create a perfect Adam and Eve and then just make everything the way that he wants it to be. But he loves us. We are individually a part of him, or come from him, and he created us in such a way that he is demonstrated individually in each one of us. So he allowed the whole dragon and Adam and Eve and all this kind of, you know, thing to happen so that we would come forth and then of course he perfectly planned out the plan of salvation and everything so that we when we go back we ain't going back like rough against or ruffians we're we're going back in glorified form so we can be with him forever he loves us so much that he wants us to be with him forever let that enter into your heart for a while love and the fraction of love that God is, is meekness. And we saw that when He, Almighty God, became a Savior that was lowly, that was beaten, unesteemed, had no beauty, no comeliness, nothing that the world looks for to escalate or esteem a man or woman. Nothing. So, love demonstrated is God's spirit at work in his creation, in our very spirit that came from him. Love. Love is his empowerment even for us to override this human shell and to step into our eternal glorified body what does that mean it means it gives us the empowerment love is such an empowerment he is love it gives us the empowerment to look beyond this life and receive what is coming Love is a beautiful and glorious, wonderful, is his name. Love 
it cannot be put into words, it cannot be demonstrated by one rose, unless it's the rose of Sharon, or a bunch of roses, or a garden of roses, or a field of roses, even though when he makes the rose into a field of roses in heaven, that's beautiful, but not for my point. Love cannot be expressed in chocolates and in hearts and in, you know, kisses and hugs. And, and that's not the depth of love. Love has to go deep. The depth of love. The depth of love is God. It's God. He's the center. And love endures all things, hopes all things. Love is such a glorious and beautiful and just eternal power. It's Him. God is love and love is God. And when that love, now that's the fruit of the Spirit that I just named out there, right? And that's just giving you a pinch of what He is in each one of them, right? But love gives us that ability to look towards hope. Because love is that power, that sovereign power who is God, that has loved us beyond anything that we can ever be on this planet that would disappoint Him, that would hurt Him, that would, uh, you get the point, that would basically go against it. That love overrides it. And love stains. Love stains. And this kind of love I'm talking about is agape love. I'm talking about His love. When He gets a hold of you in that love, or me in that love, ain't no letting go. You let go of everything else. But His love, Oh, beloved, his, his love is a staining love. It leaves a lasting impression. It is enough. His love is overflowing. And he is just empowering his people in these last days. When people are growing cold and hateful and angry and evil and greedy and weird, demonic, his love is overflowing. It's overflowing. It's continuous. It's glorious. He is. He was and will forever be Yahweh, Jesus Christ. Yes, he is. Love is is more than a four-letter word. It's more than a feeling. It's more than the expression of in, uh, erotica or filio. Love is unconditional in those ways. God is love. And when love like that, when He is present in souls, when He is present in the spirit man. That's what makes a difference. That, that is what makes the difference. We shine like light bulbs on the earth and people wonder how and why. So through it all, we're coming through. Through the fire like gold. Because love is with us. Love is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God. And God is love. There is no force greater than Him. People could limp it, like it, put it in their pocket and keep it. I don't care. He is love. And He cares. He is love. If you don't find Him today, you'll find Him. You find him sooner or later, he will stand before you as the greatest force that ever was. And you get to say if you received him or if you rejected him. So that's a word that he laid on my heart, even as I hear him say, No greater love has any human being on this earth than he 
God, Jesus Christ, who laid his life down for his friends. And why did he say his friends? I told you said he died for the whole world. But you are my friends. If you do what I command you, that's what he says. You're his friends if you do what you, he commands you. And then he says, if you love me back, you keep my commands. And then he says, I hear you, King. I hear him saying, for he who is foreknown before time ever was, before God um, brought creation to be, who was foreknown was also predestined to be sons of God. And whoever was predestined was called. That's why you hear him calling your name. Yes, King. I love you too. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah, okay, he's electrocuting me. Take some of that. <laughs> so, hallelujah, King. Hallelujah. So, and whoever is called to do the kingdom work, because he calls you by name, whoever is called and you answer, he say, yes, Father, here I am, calls you by name. He also justified. Where? On the cross. And whoever was justified on the cross will be what? Glorified when at his glorious coming. This total uh, demonstration of love or the beginning of his total demonstration of love because that love goes on forever. That love is continuous. That love does not stop. God is love and he is God. And when you got him, the world shines. Because wherever you go, you shine, you bubble, you radiate, you radiate Him. It can be what? People could be nasty with you, they could be nice with you, they could be mocking you, they could be supporting you. You could be going through the worst time of your life, you could be sick, you could be poor, you could be rich, you could be whatever you are. God's love empowers. All right? So that's the word of the Lord and what he laid on my heart. I hope that you got something from it. Uh, if you don't know him as love, now is your time. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And you shall be saved. Pray with me. Just believe. No, yes, you. You. I'm talking to you. Running, running to go on your bed in your pillow and you're leaving the laptop on. You. You self. And you in the kitchen preparing for tomorrow's lunch. Yeah, you. I'm talking to you. You sitting on the porch. Uh, take all that pipe out of your mouth. I heard the Lord saying, pray with me. So pray with me. Say, Father God, I come to you a sinner. I'm sorry that I sinned against heaven. And I'm sorry that I sinned against you. I'm sorry that I sinned against you and I'm sorry that I sinned against heaven. Say, thank you for coming. As Jesus Christ, or if you want to say as the Son of God, meaning flesh subjected to spirit, say thank you for coming as Jesus Christ and living a perfect life for me from beginning to end, from my conception to my death, if I die. Say thank you for walking it out perfectly, to give me a perfect report. Thank you for becoming my sin and unrighteousness. Say thank you for washing my sins away in your precious blood Jesus fill me up with your Holy Spirit tell him hallelujah tell him say I forsake religion and the traditions of men right now Hinduism Islam Baptist or no Baptist well, yeah, well, Catholic Catholicism Buddhism, all the isms and ands that are not of you, every aspect of Christianity that walks in darkness. Say, I forsake religion and tradition, and I run to you. Say, I confess you now, Jesus Christ, as my personal Savior, meaning whatever personal that you go through, whatever personal that you walk through in your life, He is there. So I confess you now, Jesus Christ, as my personal Savior. 
Alright, they cut me off a little bit. Let me just pray for you. Father, just pray that you'll give them a peace that surpasses all understanding that your race is enough, Lord God. I pray that you would lead them to a Bible-believing person, that you would uh, lead them to baptism, the words of baptism, baptize them with your holy fire, Lord God. Give them an unction of your spirit, Father. Father, even as I speak in your name, Jesus, help them to know that angels in heaven are rejoicing for one more saved sinner. Father, cast away disease and sickness from them. I pray that you fill them up with your amazing love, overflow in them, and rejoice. Let them rejoice to know you. Let them rejoice. Let them have a journey of joy in your presence. Glorify your name in their lives, Lord God. And you said you've done it, Jesus. Do it again and again. He said you have and you will. Jesus' name. Welcome to the kingdom of heaven, beloved. Welcome, welcome. Jesus' name. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, beloved. Shalom.